In this video, we will be solving this question which says, Nancy is also taking a course in economics from Professor Stern. Professor Stern gives two midterms. Instead of discarding the lower grade, Professor Stern discards the higher one. Let x1 be the score on a first midterm and x2 be the score on a second midterm. Which combination of scores would Nancy prefer? x1 is 20 and x2 is 70 or x1 be 60 and x2 be 50. So now we have the combination as x1 x2 where x1 is the score on her first midterm and x2 be the score on her second midterm. Now according to the question professor Stern discards the higher one. So what do you mean by that? Suppose you have the combination as x1 comma x2 then if x1 is less than x2 then the score of x1 is considered if x2 is less than x1 then the score in second midterm is considered and if both of them are equal then it does not really matter which score is considered as they are equal so that would be x1 or x2 now with this information we have to see which combination would nancy prefer so your first combination is 20 comma 70 so if you compare this with this combination then this is your x1 and this is your x2 that is this is the score on your first midterm and this is the score on your second midterm here your 20 is less than 70 which means that the score on first midterm is less than the score on second midterm or 20 is less than 70 which implies the score of 20 would be considered now what about the second combination which is 60 and 50 so applying the same concept that is you have this combination as 60 comma 50 where this is your x1 or the score in first midterm and this is your x2 the score in second midterm here 50 is less than 60 which corresponds to this combination thus the score of 50 would be considered so when nancy has the combination of 20 and 70 she gets the score of 20 and when nancy has the combination of 60 and 50 she gets the score of 50 obviously nancy would like to get a higher score in the midterms than the lower one which means that she would always prefer for this combination over this one and she would prefer the combination of 60 comma 50 as it gives her the higher score in her economics course now let's move on to the next part which says on the graph use blue ink to draw an indifference curve showing all of the combination of scores on her econ exam that nancy likes exactly as well as x120 and x270 also use the blue ink to draw the indifference curve showing the combination that nancy likes exactly as well as x160 and x2 is 50 does nancy have have convex preferences over these combinations so now we have this graph where on the x-axis you have grade on first midterm and on the y-axis you have grade on second midterm and and the question says that we have to use the blue ink to draw the indifference curve showing all the combination of scores on her econ exam that nancy likes exactly as well as x1 is 20 and x2 is 70 so we have here the combination as 20 comma 70 which on the graph would like here we have the grade on first midterm as 20 and the grade on second midterm as 70 and the combination will lie here and as we saw in the above part that if this is her combination then she would end up scoring 20 on her midterm so if we want to draw the indifference curve passing through the combination of 20 comma 70 we want all those combinations which will give nancy exactly score of 20 so let's consider a combination as 20 comma 50 where 20 is less than 50 so she will end up scoring 20 hence this combination will lie on the indifference curve let's consider another example so suppose that is 20 comma 30 so again 20 is less than 30 so she will again score 20 on her midterm thus this combination will also lie on the indifference curve as it is giving the exactly the same score on her midterm as the combination of 20 comma 70 which is 20 now consider another point which is 20 comma 20 here the grade on both the midterms are equal which is equal to 20 thus this point will also also lie on the indifference curve so if we join all these points we would be able to get the straight line that passes through all this point but note that if you consider a point suppose as 20 comma 7 then 7 is less than 20 which means she would get the score of 7 thus this point will not lie on this indifference curve 
as we want those combinations which give Nancy exactly the score of 20. That means this entire line segment beyond the point 20, 20 would not be a part of your indifference curve. So even if you consider a very close point to this 20, 20, suppose this point is this, then it would be of the form something like 20, 19 point something something. Then the score of 19 point something something would be considered for a midterm and not 20. Thus, this would not be a part of your indifference curve. Hence, any combination beyond the combination of 20, 20 will not belong to your indifference curve as that will lead to a lower score than 20. So till now we have this shape of the indifference curve. So let's see if there are any other combinations that will give Nancy the score of 20. Suppose you have the combination as 40, 20 where Nancy is scoring the score of 40 on her first midterm and 20 on her second midterm. Then again she would end up scoring 20 as the lower of the two grades are considered. Thus this will lie on your indifference curve. Similarly the 0 0.65, 20 would also lie on your indifference curve as it gives Nancy the score of 20. Thus joining all these points we get this straight line. Again, let's see if the entire line belongs to the indifference curve or not. So for that, suppose we have a point as 5, 20. Here 5 is less than 20 which implies the score of 5 would be considered. Thus this point will not lie on the indifference curve as we are only considering those combinations which give Nancy the score of 20. Thus any combination to the left of 20, 20 will not be a part of your indifference curve. Thus your final indifference curve would look like this which is your L-shaped indifference curve having the vertex at 20, 20. Thus, this indifference curve shows all the combination of score on her econ exam that Nancy likes exactly as well as x1 is equal to 20 and x2 is equal to 70. Now, the question also asks us to use the blue ink to draw the indifference curve showing the combination that Nancy likes exactly as well as x1 is equal to 60 and x2 is equal to 50. So, thus Nancy is now scoring the score of 60 on her first midterm and, and 50 on her second midterm which would give her the combination here that is 60 comma 50 where the grade on first midterm is 60 and the grade on second midterm is 50. So now we have to draw the indifference curve for this combination. Note that when Nancy has the combination of 60 comma 50 then she ends up scoring 50. Thus we want all those combinations which gives Nancy the score of exactly 50 for her midterm. That means we want all those combinations whose lower value is 50 and it does not matter whatever your higher value is till the point your lower value is exactly equal to 50 as the professor is considering the lower grade of the two. So now suppose you have the point as 80 comma 50 then again the score of 50 would be considered thus this combination would lie on your indifference curve. Next consider the point as 50 comma 50. Here again Nancy would end up scoring the score of 50 as they both are equal and they are also giving Nancy the score of exactly 50. Thus this would be a part of your indifference curve. Hence let's join all these three points and we would be able to get the straight line. But again we have to see if this entire line belongs to the indifference curve or not. For that consider a point such as 30, 50 here. Nancy would get the score of 30 as the lower of the two grades are considered. Thus this would not be a part Part of your indifference curve as we want all those combinations which give Nancy exactly the score of 50. Hence any point to the left of 50 comma 50 would not be a part of your indifference curve. Thus, this is your one segment of the indifference curve. Let's see if there are any other combination that give Nancy the exactly the score of 50. So suppose you have the point of 50 comma 70. Again 50 is less than 70 as Nancy would end up scoring 50. Hence this combination would be a part of your indifference curve. So joining the point 50 comma 50 and 50 comma 70 we would be able to get the straight line. Again let's see if the entire line belongs to the indifference curve or not. So for that consider a point 50 comma 25. Here 25 is lower between the two thus the score of 25 would be considered for the midterm but we want all those combinations which give Nancy the score of 50 hence it would not belong to the indifference curve. Similarly all the points to the down of 50 comma 50 will not be a part of the indifference curve as all those combinations wouldn't give Nancy the score 
lower than 50. Hence your final interference curve would look like this which is this L shaped curve having the vertex at 50 comma 50. Thus this is your interference curve showing the combination that Nancy likes exactly as well as x1 is equal to 60 and x2 is equal to 50. Now the next part of the question says does Nancy have convex preferences over these combinations or not. Now note that both the indifference curve depict the same preferences. It's just this indifference curve corresponds to the combination of 20 comma 70 and this indifference curve com corresponds to the combination of 60 comma 50. Thus having the same preferences if we are able to figure out the convexity of one indifference curve the same thing will apply to the other. So I will only check the convexity for this indifference curve and apply the same concept to this indifference curve as well. That is if this indifference curve is convex then this is also convex and vice versa as both the indifference curve depict the same preferences. So first let's understand what do you mean by convex preferences. Preferences are convex if whenever the consumption bundle x1 x2 is indifferent to the consumption bundle y1 y2 then the combination bundle or the weighted average bundle that is tx1 plus 1 minus ty1 comma tx2 plus 1 minus ty2 is weakly preferred to the consumption bundle x1 x2. For any t such that t is between 0 and 1 where 0 and 1 are both included. In simple terms convexity says that consumer prefers averages to the extremes. So if the consumer is indifferent between x and y then she prefers the average tx plus 1 minus ty to either x or y. So I have already explained how you can figure out the convexity of your preferences very much detail in your previous part. So I will just quickly see if the preferences are convex or not for this part. Now the method remains the same just like the previous part which you can always refer to in my previous video where I broke down this complex definition of convex preferences to these three simple steps where this was your first step where you have to choose two consumption bundles such that the consumer is indifferent between them. The second step corresponds to this part of the definition where we have to find the combination bundle or the weighted average bundle for different values of t where t is between 0 and 1 and 0 and 1 are both included and the third step corresponds to this so if the weighted average bundle is weakly preferred to the extreme bundle for all values of t then the preferences are convex so let's apply these steps one by one and see if the preferences are convex or not so your first step says to choose any two consumption bundles such that the consumer is indifferent between them which means we have to choose any two consumption bundle on the indifference curve so Suppose I choose these two consumption bundles where my first consumption bundle is 20 comma 70 and my second consumption bundle is 70 comma 20 and since they are lying on the same indifference curve hence the consumer would be indifferent between them. Now second step says find the combination bundle or the weighted average bundle for different values of t which means if I join these two points I would be able to get a straight line which corresponds to the weighted average bundles between these two points for different values of t where t is between 0 and 1 and 0 and 1 are both included. Now the third step is if the weighted average bundle is weakly preferred to the extreme bundle for all values of t then the preferences are convex. So now instead of seeing for each and every bundle what we do is we just check for the entire line at once that is if the entire line is making the consumer at least better off that means if the weighted average bundle is able to give consumer either same level of satisfaction or is making him better off then we say that the weighted average bundles are weakly preferred to the extreme bundles and thus your preferences would be convex. So suppose if I consider these two points on my line and since they are part of your line as 0 and 1 are included so these two combination would also be your weighted average bundle which are to be taken into consideration and since they are lying on the interference curve which means they are giving the consumer the same level of satisfaction thus the preferences are convex for these two points but what happens throughout this line. So if I randomly choose a point which is like suppose 50 comma 40 which is lying on your line and if I draw the indifference curve passing through this point then then it will look like this which is your red indifference curve and since the red indifference curve is towards the right and up so by monotonicity we say that the point 50 comma 40 is giving the higher level of satisfaction to the consumer and since this indifference curve is towards the right and upwards direction which is which is your preference direction which you can also verify it from here so at this indifference curve Nancy was able to score 20 but here Nancy would be able to score 40 so she would always prefer this combination to any extreme combination 
on the indifference curve that means the weighted average bundle is lying on the higher indifference curve which is giving the higher level of satisfaction to the consumer thus here the weighted average bundle is making nancy better off hence we say that the preferences are convex for this entire line as well thus nancy have convex preferences over these combinations so you have convex preferences and the same thing will apply to the indifference curve passing through the combination of 60 comma 50 as it also depicts the same preferences just like this indifference curve